Hi everybody, Christy Giannone back in week five of our MPA 530 Public Finance and Budgeting. This week we're taking a look at capital budgeting and some CIP uh, processes, long-term debt, and the assessment for a particular project in our city's CIP. So capital projects are improvements or additions to the city's physical assets. So for the city of Palmdale, they have a 10-year CIP that starts in 2018 uh, and is running through 2028. So the annual update process for the city of Palmdale begins in October of each year and it involves city council members, planning commission members, and city staff being asked to provide input on revisions to the current CIP or any new projects that have been identified. Uh, so the comments and input are incorporated into a new CIP document, which is presented to the Planning Commission for the determination of whether it's consistent with the general plan goals and policies of the city. So early planning activities of a CIP uh, project, such as building assessment, needs assessment, and even, even the master planning is often funded out of um, general revenues. But once a decision is made to go forward with the project, it is necessary to secure more substantial funding to cover the larger expenses like design and architecture fees, site acquisition costs, and construction costs. So as you can see from these two graphics, the uh, city of Palmdale has 216 proposed projects that are divided into these five categories and the majority of these projects are streets so 68 percent of the funds allocated for streets projects so i decided to take a focus and look at one of these street programs which is a resurfacing program and this would prolong the life of the existing asphalt pavement by making these improvements over the 10 years so they utilize this pavement management system or pms tool and this helps to determine what streets will be involved so as you can see there is a variety of funding sources that they are using but for the purpose of this presentation we'll take a look at what some long-term debt options could be so the total cost um, that they are estimating for this project is a little over $75,000, which was one of the larger CIP projects located in their master plan. So there are a variety of ways that agencies can look at funding these larger long-term projects. Um, donations and developer funding, this is more commonly seen in larger cultural arts projects like the um, infrastructure of a library or cultural arts center. There's a variety of different grant funding and obviously pulling from the general fund. But for this assessment, we are taking a look at the primary types of long-term debt that the city can use to construct the capital project, along with the advantages and disadvantages. Advantages. So debt financing is used when the capital assets or projects cannot be prudently funded from the current revenues or fund balances of the agency. Debt finance is also utilized to better ensure intergenerational equity by spreading out the payments for the debt um, in long-term planning for their budget and CIP projects for consideration as the administration and governing bodies take a look at the city's long-term planning. Uh, this is similar to taking out a mortgage to purchase a home that you intend to live in for a long time rather than emptying your savings to pay in cash. So debt is not used to fund operating expenses, which is also something that cities have to take into consideration. So taking a look at general obligation bonds, these bonds are voter approved and backed by the full faith and credit of a city. So what that means is the city will use its taxation power to generate the revenue to pay back the bond under any circumstances. The funding source for GO bond payments is typically tax based like property taxes, um, which is generated each year based on the tax adoption by a city council. Um, again, they are voter approved, so GEO bonds require that voter approval before they can be issued, so that would have to be done by whatever provisions the city uh, council of the agency would need. So while the advantages of the GEOs is that it's typically easy to obtain, um, one of the larger disadvantages is with that voter approval, depending on the type of project, it could be challenging to obtain. The second source of long-term debt that the city can consider is a revenue bond, and revenue bonds repay creditors from income generated by the project that the bond itself is funding. So revenue funds account for revenue received for specifically identified purposes. This is often seen if you take a look at larger infrastructure projects like airports or toll roads. Another good example is in the agency that I currently work for, the city of Glendora. We are getting the gold line 
And so the revenue generated from that will help to fund some of the projects across our city and the other ad uh, adjacent cities who are participating in the larger project. Um, for this particular CIP project that I pointed out for the city of Palmdale and taking a look at um, redoing the streets in a variety of different areas throughout the city, the streets are currently not identified and revenue from this project may be difficult to track. And so for that purpose, I would recommend that the city uh, take a look at general obligation bond for funding this particular uh, CIP project. So thank you once again for listening to my presentation in the week five. I look forward to your assessments and I hope everyone has a healthy and blessed week. And I look forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you.